Hi guys, in the previous video on k-means, we had seen how two clusters can be created for a given data set. In this video, we will see how we can create more than two clusters. In fact, we will take input from the user and depending on the input, we will be creating clusters. It could be two, it could be five, it could be six. Of course, it is pertinent to mention here that we should not be creating clusters without deciding upon the optimum number of clusters that should be created for a given data set. Having said that, let us see how this program is managing things dynamically depending on the input given by the user. So let us take this portion first. Okay, before that, let us run this program and just see how it is working. So let us run for two. So two clusters, right? Depending on the user input. Let us run it again. This time we will give six. And here we go. There are six clusters created out of this data set. Of course, these are initial initial data centroids, right? Fine. This we already discussed in the previous video. The, the only difference is that in the previous video, we limited ourselves to creating only two clusters. And we were only creating data set for random number of data points, correct? Now let us see how it is working and uh, let us discuss right from here. This is very simple code. It is X data for Y data frame is getting created. Initially, we will consider data frame having a GRP column with value all the rows with zeros. That means initially we would consider that there is only one cluster for each and every data point. And then this is something new. This is where we are storing the user input, number of centroids. Then what we will do? DF sample, number of centroids, which means if user is entering four, we will take four data points from the data set and consider those four data points to be the initial centroids, as was discussed in the previous video. And then we will draw a scatter plot. So let us run this. Okay. Four. It has done this, right? Initially, we are considering four centroids. Nothing else is happening in, in this piece of code, right? That's all. Let us move forward. After this, what we are doing is let us bring this four lines, okay? Let us discuss them one by one. What is this doing? Let us see. When we run this, okay? This variable has got four elements in this array. What is this number of centroids? Four. So this list comparison, this loop is for four times. Every single time this get distance function is getting invoked with the value i. First it will go with zero, then one, then two, then three. And what is df? df is nothing but our data frame. What does this function do? 
So let us run at least one once and just see. Assuming that we are passing with, let me remove this loop is not needed, passing 0 and df. So what it will do? It will create this column. What is this column? For first data point, it has calculated distance between the first centroid and itself. So all these data points, all these data points, there are 10,000 data points. For 10,000 data points, distance has been calculated for a given centroid. Imagine this, this is first centroid. Then for second, then third, and then fourth. Now what do we do with this? Look. This is getting stored here in this variable. Correct? Okay, good. Now bring this loop. What we are doing here is we are saying run this loop for four times. And here, this is interesting. We are saying the first time D plus STR, assuming it is zero, it will be D zero. If I write one, it will be D one. If I will say 2, it is D2, then last D3. So, we are getting four strings, D0, D1, D2, D3. And then, what is this? Dist i. See, this is dist variable. 0 means this element, 1 means this, 2 means this, 3 means this. So, iteratively, this series will be appended to the data frame with the name this d0 next it it will take the second element and append the data frame with this then this then this so four columns we will have at the end of this loop let us run and see we we already ran this right the first one was run. We can run it again, no problem. So let us run this and see our data frame, how it looks. Look here, D0, D1, D2, D3. Let us discuss this again. See, we have these many data points, right? From 0 to 9,999. For this particular data point, the distance between first centroid and itself is this. And then for this data point, for first centroid, distance is like this. So this column was created. This column is nothing but first element of the array. Then second, then third, then fourth. Okay. So that is how dynamically we created D0, D1, D2, D3. Had it been only 3, we would have created D0, D1, D2. Had it been 10, then it would have created from D0 to D9. Okay, good. So our data frame is ready. What next we will do? See, next piece of code says, let me remove this. Okay. This also I will remove. Not needed, not needed. Now, what, what exactly it is doing? See here. It's very simple. What we are doing here is we are telling that df columns, right? And then we say 3 colon. What does this mean? Just see. It, it will get a d0, d1, d2, d3. If, it, if there are uh, 10 such columns, it will bring from d0 to D9. We are using slicing. Our data frame is like this. Correct? So we are telling the pandas that we want column columns from here. 0, 1, 2, 3. 3 colon means 3 onwards. Correct? So dynamically it will take all the columns. Good. Then 
here just see what we are doing df if i enclose this within this bracket then what will happen this is what we are getting now what we will do is you will say look do one thing give index value of that column see axis one is called means column reading will will take place like this like this right so give me the column id of that value which happens to be the minimum of this four so look what we will get here d0 for the very first row for second row just see this for third row it will be this one d3 so let us run and see this how we are go, uh, getting data here look here d0 40 again d0 30 and d3 this is d3 why because this is 0 1 2 3 and this value happens to be the lowest among these four values so likewise now we will have the column which will be called GRP, it will refer to every single row of that column will refer to the lowest number among these four columns. So let us run and just see that. Okay. We will run this. Let me remove this and run this. The whole line. Done. Let us see data frame now. Look data frame here grp was zero see initially we created group column so there is no question of group getting created here group is already there okay so here see we have d0 d0 d3 d1 d2 we already discussed now what we will do we will try to get average of x and y depending on this group so for all d0 what is going to be the average for d1 what is going to be the average so on and so forth okay so let us do that average calculation so so far we have done till grouping now uh, ha having created grouping now we will create for each and every group what are the average values we will get so that is not going to get appended over here of course not right because for every single column we will get a pair of values that is average of x and average of y so let us get that code now where is that here it is group okay this one correct yeah now let us run this so what is going on let me remove this variable run it and let us see see here see we got four averages now every single centroids position will be placed according to this average earlier in the very first iteration centroids are positioned like this immediately immediately after we run the positions will be like this so let us put that variable centroids this is what it is right okay so it is already there in this what is next we are doing see we created four centroids and then now we will run the entire thing look here it is while true it will keep iterating till the centroids the new centroid that means the new calculation of centroids is different from the old one the moment the new calculation turns out to be equal to the old one that means the positions are not changing and we will break out of the loop correct and that is what is the logic that is how it is working correct 
So let us recap the entire thing. What did we do? First, we created X and Y randomly, created a data frame, and then we appended this GRP with zero initially. And then we created four columns because the input was four. Four columns, each column containing distance between a given data point and its respective centroids. Then we calculated average based on grouping. Correct? And that those averages are stored in this variable called centroids. And then we are iteratively running it. And the moment we have got centroids positions finalized, we will get out of the loop. Okay? That is precisely what is happening. So, once we run this, again, we can run for 6 or 4 or whatever or 5, whatever, we will get clusters created accordingly. That's it. So, let us run it again. Let us run this for 10 this time. And expect pandas to be performing slow when you we give too many number of clusters right we input is if we are creating many clusters then the performance is going to be slow okay so like now what is this we have created this clusters fine but what is this this is nothing but verification code let us discuss that as well how we are verifying that our old averages are equivalent to new averages, meaning we do not have any change in the new averages and then get out of the iterative process. So let us discuss this one by one. See what is happening here when we write like this. This is concatenation. So, this is basically the new one and this is old one, which is which is named as centroids hold. That is, hold the old average. That is what it is. Okay, fine. So, we created four columns. See, this is 171 and this is 171. The new one and the old one was matching. 35, this is Y. The new calculation and this is old calculation this is for centroid first centroid second centroid likewise for 10 centroids so all the averages are matching so we are getting but then what is this code all about so we are putting those data frames side by side if i write centroids okay hold like this this is what is getting printed right i mean it doesn't look nice and we cannot really read like this so it is being put side by side that is line number one line number two is nothing but zero one two three these columns are getting renamed as x1 y1 x2 y2 x1 and y1 these column names represent the new calculation x2 and xy these columns represent the old calculation done then what what is this line doing see this line basically here we are checking whether the new x1 is equal to old x old uh, x right this is this is new x and this old x see equal to this boolean so what we'll get we'll get all true means what you, we need not manually check right this 171 yeah 171 126 126 then 36 36 no all true means they are matching and so will be the case for y new new y i mean new 
centroids and old centroids. That is nothing but the average calculation. Fine. This is also true. So what we are doing? We are creating these two and then we are telling, please show us only the final two columns. See what happens if we implement, if you see that, see, we, we are interested to see only this true true. If any of these elements is showing us false, that means we have come out of the loop before, before new average settled down and which will be wrong. Correct. So this is how it is working. Let us run this for once more. This time we will create maybe three. Correct. Just see, we are seeing true, 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 which means what? What does this mean? All excess of old and new calculations are matching and so is the case for Y. That's it. That is how we are dealing with this dynamic programming. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.